Welcome back to Poetry and Police. Don't forget to subscribe and share my videos. Hit that notification bell. Members of the Jamaica diaspora gathered outside the Jamaican consulate in, in Manhattan uh, on the 10th of this month. Um, and their resolve was to speak out or demonstrate or to protest. I would say demonstrate, it's just a strong word. To protest about the, the, the lacking, lacking of the Jamaican government in its attempt to rid the country of crime and violence and health issues and rebuilding of the country and, and etc. Um, I believe that it's full time that people who are living in abroad get involved in the rebuilding of the Jamaica, whether it's physically or verbally. And in this case, these people are getting involved verbally, which should have been done a long time ago. And uh, some part of their, this, the, 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 the protest is about the corruption within Jamaica. Specifically, I would say, um, in, in, in corruption in government and, as you know, in the police department and, other, and in other government entities. It is my understanding that the protest on May 10 followed a similar one that was held in Miami on the 9th of January this year. And that more protests will follow maybe in the state of Washington and uh, Washington DC, Canada and also the United Kingdom maybe, you know, and may, this may follow other states and other countries around the world where Jamaicans are living. Because finally, the people of Jamaica who are living in other countries, even though most people have thrown stones behind their back and said they are done with Jamaica and Jamaica is too, is too much of a violent country and we hate Jamaica. While other people like myself who, have, who, 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 are, who love our country and who are patriots and want to go back home one day or even visit our country and village, visit our relatives that are in, in, in Jamaica. We find the crime problem in Jamaica as a deterrent. It is not only a deterrent to, to, to us visiting, but also returning residents. And when I say this now, then it affects returning residents the, the, the most because from over the years we have been, we have been seen. And if you are watching the news, you, have, you would have realized that a, a new, numerous re returning residents have been murdered and robbed. I personally, my friends, have a friend of mine who, who was living in Brooklyn. A best good friend of my father, a friend of the family, was living in Brooklyn and he, he told me that he was retiring and returning to, to Jamaica. And after reti uh, retiring and re returning to Jamaica, this man was living in the Westmoreland, Westmoreland area. And he, he, he started doing some farming in the Westmoreland area, cows and you name it. And one day he sold uh, maybe 10 cows I heard and got thousands of dollars. And it would appear as if people knew that he had sold the cows and had money. So he stopped and bought some, bought some people drinks at a local bar in the neighborhood. And after retiring from the bar and went home, upon reaching his home, he was attacked by unknown assailants and maybe they were known to him who tied him up and gagged his mouth and robbed him of all the money that he, that he achieved from selling the cows. And the man died as a result of that. They left him there to die. He suffocated to death. And uh, I mean, I felt so bad about it knowing this man personally. Knowing this man personally, I felt so bad about it. And uh, my father was also shaken by the mother. My father was so hurt about it that my father had an heart attack shortly afterwards. And this is one of the things that I'm saying to you people, that people are afraid to go back to Jamaica because of the lack of security. And the lack of Jamaica, even though Jamaica is a free country, uh, you, you feel more free in Jamaica than even in the United States. But Jamaica is a very dangerous place to live, uh, especially when you are retired and return home to Jamaica, you are most vulnerable 
at that point in time because most people retire to Jamaica and most of them are living by themselves and, and then you become victim of these unscrupulous um, criminals in Jamaica who prey on older people and, and who are preying on retirees and there's more cases about Jamaicans like a friend of mine again returned back to his community and was attacked in his house and shot at but luckily he jumped to the back door and escaped uh, with his life So people are afraid to go back to Jamaica and as a result of that, I will concur with the protesters who finally have taken this to the Jamaican consulate in, 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 to, in, in various states and other countries to protest about the, the crime and level of crime and violence in Jamaica and the unprovided security for returning residents. Jamaica is tend to is building a whole lot of uh, what are my gated communities that provide security and they believe that this is the solution to you know to some of the crime problems or the security problems in Jamaica but it is not the solution because people people come to America from all different parishes in Jamaica not everybody wants to live in in, in gated community people have their lands and people want to go back to where they were born People want to go back to their heritage. People want to go back to where they were from to spend the rest of their lives and live in peace. And that is not being offered to the people who are who, who are retiring and, and returning to Jamaica. Jamaica is the one of the most dangerous places on the face of the earth when it comes to returning residents. And the records will show that the residents, the returning residents from the United States and other countries around the world who are returned to Jamaica, the record will show that they have been murdered robbed and so people are scared to come back to jamaica so no i agree with this protest on whole holy and solely once the, the the intention of the protest is not political but rather in a bid to force the government's hand in jamaica to make certain decisions to make certain security decisions as it relates to the security of returning residents and to the security of the whole residents of Jamaica in a nutshell. Because every resident in a country, every citizen in a country deserve, deserve security and deserve proper security. We deserve proper health care, which does not really exist in Jamaica really. But I would say that the Jamaican government over the years have tried its best in, in, in terms of assisting people with health care. As a matter of fact, I will find it even better than the United States because the United States does not have a free health care like that. At least in, in Jamaica, health care is free. You can go to the public hospital and get and you, you are treated. But the thing about it that making health care free in Jamaica affected the whole health ministry tremendously because then there's shortage of funds. And on that term of shorting of funds, you know, I mean, we have to understand that Jamaica is a rich country. Jamaica is a very rich country. But the, the thing about it is that our resources, our taxpayers' money, are not being directed to the relevant ministries to cast a positive effect on the country's rebuilding. And when I say this, I say, we say that enough money are not being plugged into the health ministry or even if the money is being plugged in the health ministry the money is being diverted to, for personal use it is the same thing with the security ministry and uh, even a few a few days ago the, um uh, fitz bailey was doing an interview had a speech and he was addressing his audience and one of his one of his cries was that the government should consistently that is the word, you know, that the government should consistently ensure that proper funding is extended to the security ministries. Which is a good point by Fitzbilly. Because if you, and, and I have been saying that over the years, that the, in, any, in any country, the ministry that should make you the, the two the three most important ministries that should always be funded and nothing should be short in these three ministries are the, it's supposed to be the ministry of national security that is ministry of national security the protection of the country the protection of the country's citizens the security of the country the citizens the fight against crime and violence which is plaguing which has been plaguing jamaica for decades 
So that is the Ministry of National Security should be priority number one in terms of investment. The, the, the other ministry should be the health ministry. That's the other ministry that funds should always be allocated for the health ministry. The third ministry is the education ministry, the Ministry of Education, which plays a vital role, role in the Jamaican society. That is the other ministry that's supposed to be supported 100%. And if you observe both parties, both both political parties, PNP or JLP, none of these parties seem seem to want to invest in these ministries wholly and surely a hundred hundred percent. And that is where the breakdown is happening in Jamaica. That is the fall of Jamaica's economy. That is the fall of Jamaica itself. Because Jamaica is a very rich country. Because if you do if you do not support the, 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 the Ministry of National Security, if you do not support the police, if you do not support the security of the citizen in, in, in this country, then crime and violence will wreak the nation. And if crime and violence wreak in any country will affect tourism. People will be afraid to invest in Jamaica. And as we know that Jamaica is one of the destinations where investment is, is, far, is, is paramount. In any nation, the, gov the government of any nation should provide the best security for our citizens, the best health care for our citizens, or facilitate the best health care for its citizens, or facilitate or provide the best education for its citizens. And I believe that in any country, education should be free, but Jamaica is not, is, is, is not even close to that. And we go around and we act like Jamaica is a very poor country and we know that Jamaica is not a poor country because the problem in Jamaica is that the funds are being mis are misallocated. The funds are in Jamaica are used for more private business than the government's business. And these politicians are misappropriating the funds, jointly misappropriating the funds. That's why I've spoken about this sometimes, that the biggest criminal activity in Jamaica is, 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 the, is, is, is the political parties, is the government. They are the one extorting the people of Jamaica by misappropriating all the funds relevant to take care of the Jamaican people, to provide security, to provide health care, and to provide education for the Jamaican people. And this now falls under the ambit of the police also, that in proper investigation must be carried out, carried out in anybody that is going to run for public office. And that is where Jamaica is lacking because we seem to be dropping anybody in public office. All rapists we are dropping a public office. Thieves we are dropping a public office because nobody background is properly checked out. You cannot put a tainted person in office and expect clean results. You can't put a criminal in a room and not expect to lose everything in that room. Returning residents of Jamaica are the, are the, the possible returning residents of Jamaica have a right to protest. Protest about not coming back to their country and having proper security. Not coming back to their country and having proper health care. Not coming back to their country and see proper education system put in place and jobs for our citizens. And none of these parties are addressing these issues. Fitzbailey has hit the nail on the head. When he says that constant or consistent flow of money must be pumped into the Ministry of National Security in order to, in order to fight crime at the level that Jamaica needs to fight crime at. But it's not supposed to just be, it's not, it, it's not supposed to just be the Ministry of National Security, like I said to you before, it should be the Health Ministry too, and also the Education Ministries. I have seen where, you know, one time, you know, I have experience where at one point we, the, the, the Department of Solid Waste Management, there was some scandal going around in Portia Simpson's reign that they misallocated a funds that is related to the Solid Waste Management Unit. In a little stint with, with, with Hawkeye, and I remember going to Portia Simpson's villa. A her mansion then up in up in uptown and when I went there I went on the premises I saw about five to six Pahira Jeeps parked brand new and these vehicles were all packed from top to bottom with nothing but files so they were the, the vehicles were used as a, like a filing cabinet five brand new vehicles five to six I think green um some Pahira Jeeps 
and those were some of the vehicles that they were talking about that was purchased under the Salis Waste Management Unit and the vehicles were diverted for personal use and not for the Solid Waste Management. And those vehicles were there. And I was saying, look at that. And people are talking about the, the same, these same vehicles. So you see, none of these politicians, none of these politicians, I repeat, none of these politicians mean any good for Jamaica. All of these politicians, all they want to do is just stuck their pockets with money. And you think they care about the returning residents dying in Jamaica? No, they do not care about returning residents coming back and, and, and are killed. They do not even care about the residents that are living in Jamaica now, if they live or die. If you are not living in certain areas, they don't care about you. And it's not even just Jamaica alone, but it happens in America too. If you go to the black neighborhoods, there's no sign on the street in the, in, in the black neighborhoods for speed limit and such things like that. But and there is no camera set up set up in the in in, in the guys in the in the in the black communities for speed. But you go in the white neighborhood or the Jewish neighborhood, you will see the camera set up and one bag of signs that you can't drive this amount of speed and you're being watched. So this is the same thing happening in Jamaica where like Bob Marley said, in every nation it, there will be war. As long as there's no more first class or second class citizens in any nation. It will be war. And Bob Marley could never be more right. Because this is what is happening in Jamaica. Where Jamaica is... The, 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 the level of security that a people gets is based off their classification. I am telling you that straight. The level of security, the level of respect, the, the level of how police approach people are based off where they are living in. It's based off of their class. So good security in Jamaica is prioritized. As a result of your class and where you live, most of the people in the Garisti community has not, they, they, they're not even, they are, are not even cared for. And these are the people that jumps up every day and vote for these politicians, vote blindly for these politicians, even though they're not doing anything for them. That they are the people that they are politically tribalized. So one man in a neighborhood just, just know say it's a PNP neighborhood this or just a labor right neighborhood this. So all of we just vote for PNP and all of we just vote for labor right. And that, that is what the control mechanism that they use on these people. So the members of the diaspora are, 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 are what the movement of the, of the Jamaica diaspora at this point is a very positive move as it relates to the future of Jamaica, the rebuilding of Jamaica. And like they have pointed out in their protest that they feel that their country is not rebuilding enough and they feel that the, our country needs better security, which is true. And like Fitz Bailey say that money is for certain for certain for certain uh, ministry especially the ministry of national security should be consistent by any party that is in power and that is where the corruption comes in again that if the pnp is in power right now and then the pnp government falls the jlp government comes into power now they most of the time they do not continue on the path if there was a positive path, they do not continue on that path because the first thing what they do is change everybody in the ministry's head so if you if the JLP wins the election now and the heads of the ministries are where PNP people everybody lose their jobs in those positions now and labor right people are taking over now that is how it operates because the parties put their people in specific ministries so everybody answer to them and nobody is going to say no we can't do it like that everybody must be yes right across the board up to the commissioner of police and that is the greatest dis that is the greatest disservice to the people of Jamaica, you know, especially an office like Commissioner of Police, wherein the Prime Minister designates his Commissioner of Police, his person, his guy, his yes man, his puppet on a string. And so Jamaica is running and that's why Jamaica will never achieve the level of security that it needs to achieve by the security forces or any other ministry because all the ministries are being controlled by politics so the jamaican diaspora has embarked upon a positive movement i don't know if it's going to work or how much is going to um, push the jamaican government to do better or how much is going to push out corruption out of jamaica god jamaica main problem is not crime problem in you know? jamaica main problem is a corruption 
problem, 100% a corruption problem. And this corruption trickles to all the various ministries, especially the Ministry of National Security, which trickles down to the Jamaica Constabulary Force and its leaders, especially its leaders, and then its members. So, it's not only the members of the diaspora who is supposed to be protesting now peacefully right now, but it should also be the residents who are living in Jamaica. It's time that we step out on the street and protest peacefully to take back our, our, our country from, from organized crime and to get rid of the corrupted leaders who have their fingers in, not even their fingers, but have their whole entire two hand left and right into organized crime who are, who are actually leaders of organized crime units who are ripping off the Jamaican taxpayers money and who are failing to allocate funds for the relevant authorities so Jamaica can rebuild and that Jamaican can have, Jamaicans on a whole can have better security. <laughs>